Welcome to That's the Word, Wholesome Tales for the Whole Family. I'm Father James Yamauchi. Today's story, Someone Forgot the Sermon. The superior was beginning to panic. Every detail of today's ordination had been planned out in advance. The superior and his band of Franciscans had met up with the group of Dominicans and together traveled to the town for the ordination. Naturally, given the Dominicans' reputation for learning and education, one of them would give the sermon. It was so obvious that no one had bothered to confirm it with the Dominicans. When the Franciscan superior had mentioned the sermon to the Dominicans in passing, they asked, Oh yes, who is giving the sermon? Well, I assumed one of you would be giving it, the superior replied. There was an awkward silence. The Dominicans glanced at each other, everyone waiting for someone, anyone, to say something. Finally, one Dominican cleared his throat and said, We thought one of you was preaching. Oh my, exclaimed the Franciscan superior. Our mistake. We thought one of you was preaching. Another awkward pause. Since we have no plans, the Franciscan superior continued, And since you are the order of preachers, perhaps one of you could speak impromptu. That was not going to happen. One by one, each of the Dominicans politely refused, each saying that he had not prepared anything, and so sadly, he could not preach the sermon. The superior turned to his own friars in private, trying to find one that would preach on something, anything. Each one gave the same protest. He was not prepared. He couldn't speak on such short notice, especially not to a crowd of learned Dominicans. Finally, the superior reached Fernando the cook. He was desperate at this point and asked Fernando to give a short sermon. Fernando protested, saying he was not fit for such a task. But at this point, the superior was at his wit's end. He ordered Fernando to preach the sermon, and Fernando acquiesced. Later that day, Fernando stepped up to the pulpit before his brother Franciscans, the Dominicans, and the bishop. He started off in simple, halting words. The superior sighed. He was glad Fernando had stepped up to the plate, and at least his sermon was better than nothing. After a minute, however, a change came over Fernando. He became more animated, and as if in spite of himself, he poured forth brilliant and burning words, a flood of divine eloquence. The plain-spoken halting address transformed before the congregation into a powerful sermon. When Fernando finished, the room was astonished at his magnificent performance. There was no returning to the kitchen for Fernando. The Portuguese friar would be sent by his order to preach across Europe, drawing massive crowds wherever he went. Originally set on being a missionary to the Moors, Fernando fell into preaching by a providential lack of planning. His last-minute sermon would propel him to become one of the most popular saints of all time, being canonized a record nine months after his death. This preacher, discovered by accident, spends his heaven primarily helping people find their lost items. 
a Portuguese born Fernando Martins de Bolhois, but known to the world as St. Anthony of Padua. And for this week, that's the word. It's always wonderful to tell stories of saints, especially someone so beloved as St. Anthony of Padua. And I hope I pronounced his given name correctly. And many people don't realize that he was actually born in Portugal because people associate him as being Italian since he is buried in Padua. And his name is St. Anthony of Padua, which is a town south of Venice. Something else fascinating about this story is this is one where we weren't able to drill down to just the bare facts. Usually when we tell a story here, we try to make it so that everything is absolutely factual, even some of the offhand comments. But there seems to be so many embellishments around the story that even Butler's Lives of the Saints, the generally considered authoritative source on a lot of these saints, is very skittish with nailing down specifics. They don't say sermon. They say it was a customary address Hmm. at the ordination. And they don't say even say when it was in the proceedings. They say he was doing menial tasks, but they didn't say he was a cook. And they said, we're not even sure if he was a priest at that time or not. And we probably have one of the stories is correct, but there's just so many embellishments around it that it's hard to tell which one is the right one. So we just chose calling him the cook and saying that because he probably did do some cooking and calling him or calling it a sermon just because it made the story easier to understand. And there's always a great principle that my former vice rector when I was in major seminary shared with us when he was sharing a story of the saints in Rome. He always told us, he said, if it's not true, it ought to be. And it's probably because of that principle we have the variances in this story of St. Anthony of Padua because he is so beloved in countless generations and and cultures of Catholicism. If you enjoy That's the Word, please share the word. You can sign up for our weekly newsletter at sonsofthunderrock.com. That's also where you can find our social links and our email if you have any feedback or story ideas. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back next Wednesday for another wholesome tale for the whole family.